I, I hope all of you are well on this beautiful afternoon. Um, we are prepared for cold weather today, and we believe our broadcasting system is working. So if you do get too cold, you can stay in your car. And Grant might have to tell me the channel number. 88.9 for those of you who might want to stay in your car or who might decide you need to go back to your car. If you sit here for a minute, you get a little cool, don't you? But I am so glad that you've chosen to worship with us this afternoon in this in-person outdoor worship experience. We've learned how to create sacred space in unusual places during this pandemic, haven't we? But even this place becomes a place where we gather to worship God, to give thanks and praise to God, to feed our neighbors, to serve our community, and to gather in the name of Christ. And so I'm so glad that you wanted to be a part of this today. You'll notice a lot of interesting things here today. On the far left, you'll see the table where we have our registration. If you have not registered, then uh, online or pre-registered in some other way, please do so before you leave. And that's simply so we'll have a record of your attendance in case someone in this group should test positive um, and we're made aware of it in the week ahead. So also you'll notice back here our uh, pledge table for our committed campaign. We are launching that campaign today. That is our stewardship team campaign for this year is committed. We are committed to living in the way of Jesus, to sharing in the community of Christ, and to making a difference in the world through the ministries of Washington Street United Methodist Church. You, if you have not yet received a letter and a stewardship commitment form, then it should be in your mailbox tomorrow. We also have some forms there for you. In addition, this year we have these cute little buttons that we made up for our commitment campaign. It says committed. When you make a pledge, you'll get a button and also we have goodie bags for those of you who make a commitment in person. We have it detailed in the letter opportunities for you to make your commitment here at the worship services. At, we're gonna do some drive and drops for the stewardship campaign. So all you do is drive up and someone will come out and take your envelope and put it in a basket for you. So it will be recorded, uh, of course, privately and with discretion by our business manager. And also, we just wanna let you know that we are so appreciative of all that you've done, not just in this year that's coming, but also what you've done in this past year. Um, I've said it in our uh, article and in the letter, because of your generosity, we were able to meet our budget and we were also able to pay 100% of our apportionments. Friends, that is a very, very big deal at a time like this. So celebrate who you are and what you have done because you have truly made a difference in the world through your giving. I'd like to call on Lee Haynes to come to the podium for just a moment, please. Good afternoon, I'm Washington Street. Um, I wanted to um, bring you a quick report from the SPPRC. Um, as y'all know, in December, our um, Director of Music um, got a great opportunity and um, moved on and we um, were left with a uh, vacancy. The SPPRC quickly went into action. Um, we reviewed the existing um, job description um, and got a got it posted out um, into the uh, onto the web and onto our um, Washington Street site to start searching for a um, candidate. Um, over the month of December and early January, we received a number of um, candidates. Um, we weeded it down to um, three. Um, we formed a um, search team to help us do that. That search team is made up of SPPRC members um, as well as worship team members and um, uh, choir representatives. The team interviewed three candidates, very strong candidates, um, all um, from the Columbia area. Um, but we made a decision, the search team made a recommendation to the SPPRC and the SPPRC voted and we um, made an offer and we have a new director um, will be starting sometime in the middle part of February. Um, his name is Nicholas Todd Shoemate. Um, he is a graduate of Limestone and his master's degree 
in music out of Winthrop. Um, he is a uh, employee of the Lexington Richland um, School District 5. He is a choral director at Chapin um, and he's currently working um, as a um, choir director, director of music at um, St. Andrews Lutheran. So he'll be joining us. We're very excited. Um, you may have seen um, his choir um, do a couple of things in the Columbia area. Actually, he even brought his choir here um, to Washington Street to participate in a, uh, a choral event a number of years ago. So we're very excited. Um, more news to come on his exact start date, but I did want to give you an update from the uh, SPBRC that we have us now a director of music. So thank y'all. Lee is a very efficient and excellent leader, and we thank you for your hard work on behalf of our congregation, Lee. I see a couple of people who are standing, and if you would like a chair, you can come to the front or we can bring one to you. If you're okay, all right, great. Well, we're glad you're here, and we just wanna be sure you're comfortable. Um, it, today, I wanna to tell you that Austin has not abandoned us. Uh, she asked me uh, a, an important question a couple of weeks ago. She had been asked by our district superintendent to teach a, an online class on pastoral care during the pandemic. And she said, do you mind if I, you want me to do that or do you want me to attend the worship service on January the 24th? And I said, Austin, it is such an honor for you to be asked to teach this, please do it. So she is teaching online right now for our Columbia district leadership team. And we are, are so thankful for her leadership and her ways of of connecting with our congregation and keeping us all connected throughout the pandemic and we celebrate this opportunity for her. Today Carl Evans will be assisting as we go through our time of worship and um, I anticipate that we will all enjoy his participation even as we celebrate Austin's good, good fortune to be teaching today. Let us worship the Lord. Please join me in the opening prayer. Eternal light, shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy upon us. That on all our heart and mind and soul and strength, we may seek your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us repeat the words of the Apostles' Creed to affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This afternoon, I want to read three verses from the book of Jonah. The first verse comes from chapter 1, 17. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. This is followed by chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. And then finally, chapter 2, verse 10. Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out upon the dry land. May God bless us as we hear these words from Holy Scripture.
Those three verses that I just read to you are the only three verses in the entire book of Jonah that talk about that big fish. And yet, for most of us, when we think about the name Jonah, we think about that big fish that when we were children we called a whale. Y'all know what my husband says about people that drive noisy vehicles. He says even their mama don't want them to come home. <laughs> Richard Boyce wrote, The book of Jonah is difficult to classify. Is it a fable or farce? Serious history or salacious satire? Or is it with its combination of life-saving fish, misplaced psalms, and repentant cows, yes, it's included, a little of all these things. So I want to give you a broader introduction to Jonah, but I want it to be fun. So I'm going to prompt you when I need you to repeat a phrase after me. Like this, I'll say, yes, yes, yes. And then you respond saying, all right, let's try it again. Say, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Great. I think we've got it. So let's meet Jonah. God called the prophet Jonah for a specific task, but Jonah did not want to go. Say, no, no, no. Jonah decided to flee from the Lord. Say, run, Jonah, run. But God pursued Jonah in the winds and the waves, and the sailors threw him overboard. Say, swim, Jonah, swim. God provided a big fish that swallowed Jonah. Say, ooh, ooh, ooh. Jonah was in the belly of the big fish for three days and three nights. Say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jonah prayed and asked God to forgive him. Say, pray, Jonah, pray. pray. God caused the fish to release Jonah. Say, yuck, yuck, yuck. Jonah obeyed God and went to Nineveh and preached God's message of repentance. Say, good, Jonah, good. good, Jonah, good. The people of Nineveh repented and God did not destroy them. Say, mercy, mercy, mercy. mercy, mercy. Jonah was angry at the Lord's compassion and begged to die. Say, no, Jonah, no. The Lord went to Jonah and reasoned with him. God grew a plant to provide him shade and sat with him on the hillside beyond Nineveh. The Lord told Jonah, And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and also many animals? Say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord indeed. There is so much more to the book of Jonah than this big fish. The prophet himself is quite a character. As you can hear, he disobeys God, he flees from God, but he also does the right thing at some times. When the, heat, when the storms grew on the sea, he told the sailors, it's me. I've brought you this trouble. He said, throw me overboard. And in the belly of the fish, he did the right thing. He turned to God and he prayed. After his release, he obeyed God and he went to Nineveh and he preached so that the people repented. And then he angrily defied God. Well, maybe Jonah's more of a mess than a character. But here's the hard truth. 
Jonah is every one of us. Every one of us profess our faith in Jesus Christ. And then we turn and disobey God. Sometimes we flee from the presence of God. When we find ourselves in trouble, we often find ourselves crying out to God and pledging that we will do the right thing. And sometimes we actually do the very thing God wants us to do. And we do it repeatedly. And we do it well. And sometimes, when the world isn't going our way, like Jonah, we get angry with God. And we shout. And we pout. And we withdraw to that place that, where we have built walls between ourselves and God. Every one of us could say, I am a Jonah. Really, we could. But I want, I want you to think about today is what God is doing throughout these four short chapters. God is choosing Jonah. Jonah is one of many prophets in the temple of Israel. But God has a specific purpose for Jonah. Now there is a reason for God's unique call. You see, Jonah has been proclaiming the faithfulness of God to an unholy people without holding them accountable. They have betrayed the covenant. They lived as if they did not know the ways of God and God sent this proud prophet, this prophet who would not see their sinfulness and hold them accountable to preach repentance to a city, a great city, that would one day be the seat of the empire that would destroy Israel. That's why Jonah didn't want to go. He did not want God to show mercy to this foreign people, to these people who were outside the Abrahamic covenant. Is it farce, or fiction, or history? Or is it the human story that we too often write in our daily living? That story where we welcome some people, but not others. That old, old story of insiders and outsiders, of prejudice and exclusion. God chose Jonah for a specific task, for a specific reason. And God was persistent in God's choice. God pursues Jonah with the same passion that he pursued the Ninevites. Now God could have let Jonah go. God could have called another prophet to take up this work. But that's not who God is. God does not give up on God's people. Even when they are disobedient even when they flee the purposeful call of their Lord. Even then, we discover God protects Jonah. When the winds blew and the seas grew rough and the slate sailors were looking for someone to blame, Jonah raised his hand and he said, It's me, I brought this to you. He consistently told them, you must throw me overboard. And when they did, the seas and the winds grew calm. And God caused a big fish to swallow Jonah. To protect him. Even though he had disobeyed God and was running as hard as he could away from God. God chose to protect him. Now, I'm not suggesting that being in the belly of a big fish or a whale would be a pleasant experience. But most of us Jonah types are familiar with the confusion and the chaos that we create for ourselves. It's never really pleasant, is it? Yet it is while Jonah is in the belly of the whale that he decides to turn to God for forgiveness and for help. I think that's true for most of us, isn't it? 
It's when we're in a real mess that we turn to God who is truly just waiting to hear our voice. Jonah cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard his pleas and God forgave Jonah and delivered him from distress. And even when Jonah grew angry and withdrew again from God, God pursued him. God followed him outside the city of Nineveh to that hillside. And God grew a leafy plant to provide him shade and protect him from the heat of the sun. God reasoned with Jonah. God comforted Jonah. God took the time to enlighten Jonah. Yes, this book is so much more than a fish tale. It is the true story of relationship. The relationship between God and human beings. Jonah's just like us. The good news is that God is persistent. God never stops pursuing us in love. God protects us even when we cannot protect ourselves. God forgives us, comforts us, and remains with us. Therefore, wherever we are in our human journey, we can trust that God is near, just waiting to hear our voice and to welcome us home. Jonah has a message for us beyond the big fish. He has a message for us about this God who loves us beyond our understanding and comprehension. Let us hear that message and receive it with thanksgiving in the name of the Holy One, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We'll stand and sing together when we walk with the Lord, trust and obey. As we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to just lift up the family of David Jones who passed away this week. And also we want to pray for Boyd Saunders who had double bypass surgery yesterday. So we want to continue to thank God for, for his safe journey through that surgery and pray for his healing and his wholeness. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, we come to you humbled by the realization that when we look into our inner selves, we see the reflection of Jonah. We know that we sometimes speak words saying yes, but our actions say no. We acknowledge that sometimes we say no 
and you still come looking for us. And we are grateful that you wait for us, that you pursue us, you forgive us, and show us your great mercy. Truly you are the God of steadfast love. And we are humbly your people. And so we come to bring you all the cares of our lives as we name them in our hearts and those we love and care for who are sick. We remember those who have died through COVID. We pray for those who are ill with cancer, with heart disease. We pray for those who are troubled, not only in body, but also in spirit. For those who are seeking and yet do not know that you are the one that will answer their need. As your church, O oh God, we pray that you would make us true evangelists so that in us, in what we say and in how we live together, they might see a witness to your love and grace. Grant us such knowledge of you that we might truly pattern our lives after the way of Jesus so that through him and in the power of your spirit, we might be molded and shaped into the very likeness of you who are our creator. We ask you, O oh God, to bind us together in love and in faith and in hope. As we continue to be your people in the heart of the city, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would make our hearts truly pure, forgive us of our sins, and send us into the world with the joy of knowing you, our Savior. And now with the confidence of children of God, we join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. to the world to follow in the way of Jesus to love and serve God and our neighbor in all that we do knowing that Christ has sent us to share the good news of God's love and mercy for all people we go in the peace the joy and the hope of the Father the Creator the sustainer and redeemer and the Holy Spirit Amen. Um, yeah.